Hello again, this is Mr. Myosis, and this is example number two of curve sketching. Uh, so here we go. This is a radical function. So um, if this was an 80s day, I'd say, dude, this is totally radical function. Um, and we have a, a, a totally radical function with a square root in the denominator. So I'm totally going to do this. Uh, I won't use that voice the whole time. <laughs> it's, it'd be a... A surfer video for uh, for calculus right so we're gonna use the same recipe we did before and we're gonna find all these things to basically sketch out the graph and I've given you again F prime and F double prime so we don't have to do as much work in finding the derivative okay so first things first find the domain the domain here uh, we've got a square root under a um, denominator so we want to Take the denominator set that equal to zero but as you see if we did that we would get no solution for that so in this case uh, we have all real numbers right name infinity to infinity or you can just say all real numbers so since we our domain is all real numbers we don't have any vertical asymptotes well that's nice and simple do we have any holes well if we simple we can't really simplify that so we don't have any holes either Wow, this is, uh, this is turning out to be a little easier than we thought it would be, huh? This looks crazy, but it's not. It looks radical. <laughs> anyway, x-intercept. Uh, the x-intercept, we're going to set this equal to 0. We're going to deal with the numerator here, and that's going to give us 0. So I'm just going to put the point as 0, 0. And, uh, well, hey, hey, my y-intercept is the same thing. We have the origin, then the origin must be my y-intercept as well. All right, let's think about our end behavior. Or our haas, our horizontal asymptotes, if we have any. So, do we have any horizontal asymptotes? Well, let's think. Um, if I take the square root of x squared, I get x, and x over x is 1. So, we are going to have a horizontal asymptote. The question is, is it going to be 1 or negative 1? Well, it really depends on if we're going out to negative infinity and positive infinity. So, we got to be careful with these square roots of squares, right? So, as we make a, a, a really, really large you know, like pick a giant number, like negative 1,100,022. I don't know, something like that. We're going to have, um, this is going to be positive, right? Because it's going to square it first, going to make it positive, and the square root's going to take it back to its original number. So we're going to have a positive number here, but the negative number on top. So that's going to give us negative 1. So we're going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 1. However, when we go out to positive infinity, uh, pick that pick another large number like uh, 1 billion 152 million 365,122.68 I don't know something big right we're gonna have positive and a positive the same number is gonna appear twice here so we're gonna have a positive one so we're gonna have a horizontal asymptote of one and negative one all right so good we've got our horizontal asymptotes we've got two of them is there any symmetry well notice here we've got an even function on the bottom and an odd function on top and an odd divided by an even is an odd function that takes you back to pre-calculus so we have an odd function so our symmetry is around the origin we have origin symmetry all right so this is all the pre-calculus stuff let's take a look at the calculus stuff so we now need to t check if we have any relative max or mins well we already know that our domain is going to be all real numbers let's take a look at our f prime well we don't have anything in our numerator so if we set this equal to zero, we're not going to be able to solve anything. So that's going to tell us we don't have any relative mins or maxes. So we're going to just put none here. However, we do have a possible point of inflection because we have got an x in the numerator here. So we've got a pip at x equals zero, which in this case we know is going to be zero zero because when we plug in zero here, we're going to get we're going to get zero. So we have a possible point of inflection. We'll go and use the second derivative to decide that. Um, let's go and do our first derivative test here. So f prime. Um, we have, uh, well, uh, well, we don't have any critical numbers because we can't even set that equal to zero. So the question is, is this going to always be positive or always be negative? Well, no matter what we put in here, this denominator is still going to be positive. So f prime is always greater than zero actually it's always greater than zero right so if f prime is always greater than zero oops, i got the wrong thing then this is going to be a monotonic function it's going to be always increasing 
All right, so f prime is greater than zero for all x. Well, great. So now we've got a, a you know always a monotonically increasing function. Let's take a look to see if the concavity can, can, can change because even though it's monotonic, the concavity might change. So let's take a look at f double prime. We do have a possible point of inflection at zero. So let's check on the left and the right side of zero. And we get plus and minus. So we do have concave up and then concave down. This, notice here, I kind of drew what this is going to look like because it's always increasing. All right, so let's take a look. We've got a point of inflection at zero, zero now. Let's take a look at what we're going to do here. We've got a horizontal asymptote at one and negative one. So we've got it going here and here. We've got an intercept at zero, zero, which is a point of inflection. This is going to have to always increase, right? Always increase, be concave up here and concave down there. And there you go. Boom. What I say? Increasingly, it's monotonic, increasing for all x, concave up, then concave down with two horizontal asymptotes. That is a beautiful function and it looks like a Christmas tree with green and red. Anyway, we'll talk to you guys later. See ya.